Frederick Duquette, aka Fuck Render, you are the number one NFT of Origin Story. How are you? How are you, man? Thank you so much. I'm good. Good, man. Well, we have a lot to get into today, but it is called Origin Story, right? Origin Stories. And so I think that's the proper place to start. So I think the number one question that I want to ask you is, where where did Fuck Render come from? Yeah, uh, Fuck Render come from... Um, come f- like, you, do you mean like where I'm from or where, like, you mean Fuck Render? I mean, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to where you're from and all that, but I want to know the name, oh, okay, right? Okay. No, number one question, okay, where did okay, that yeah, come that, from? That, that was my, my thought. Uh, so Fuck Render comes because I, when I started doing 3D, I, I was running on a old, probably four gigs of RAM MacBook Pro 2012 or something like this. Um, and I was, I was using uh, cinema for, <laughs> excuse me for this. I live near a port, so there's always like crazy sounds. Um, so yeah, I, so I started with Cinema 4D with standard render and to see just like one frame of what I was doing would take 30, 40, an hour just to see the frame and to re- realize that, oh shit, that's not good. So I had to redo everything. I, so the name starts, the name is from from there, like fuck render. Like it was just like always, oh fuck. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so when did that come into play? What year? Um, that's about like five years ago. I'm I'm really bad with years, so I think it was I think I started in like 2016. Mm-hmm. About around that. Um yeah. And then when you created that name, did it hit you as like this is my alter ego like this is me now that i'm stepping into this or did it happen in stages? not at all no i like i started doing 3d just for fun and just because like i wanted to do something different and i wanted to fill all the hours that i have left that i was doing nothing in my life so i, I just like i just wanted to i just wanted to learn something and like to me i started fuck render because i wanted to archive my art renders so i started with uh, tumblr and it was just for me like a name just so i can just it, like i had no intention of like of doing anything with this at first i just wanted to learn and yeah so it was like an old screen name right just kind of or the old like username or like login Ex- yeah exactly it wasn't like i didn't build a brand you know i like it, it was just like i i found this name and I just like, and I feel like I like I love the name. I think it's it it could be it can be silly sometimes because I like if I work with schools and stuff like this, they're <laughs> like, oh, can we not mention your name? I'm like, oh, fuck, fuck you guys, just mention my name. Like it's it's 2021. Like, but yeah, there's still a couple of brands that I've worked with that they don't like my name, uh, and it probably honestly I'm pretty sure it cut me some opportunities because of the name but i don't like if if you don't want to say my name like i don't want to work with you i guess and on the flip side of it in the crypto art world right in in the digital art world in certain instances it may be the opposite right it's very memorable it stands out so maybe it uh yeah has gained you like that alter ego kind of personality because it it was one of the first things that i found about you it was like oh who's fuck render (laughs) yeah exactly and I, i like because people always like literally every time people pictures me as like this big buff dude for some reason like every time i meet someone they're like oh you're like you're kind you you, you're nicer than what we expected i'm like it just be i think it's just because there's fuck in the name so people think i'm like rough or something but i'm i'm i don't know i'm like i don't i don't i don't give a fuck i'm just like i think I'm, i'm i'm a smooth i'm a smooth guy i guess yeah I like that. I like the juxtaposition, right, of, of your personality and who you are versus, again, that, like, alter ego and, and that different persona. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so second question before we go all the way back. The yeah. double slash. What's up with the double slash? It was just for me to close the name. Uh, I, I wanted to find something, like, I don't know. I Like, it was just, like, I, I have, like, no idea why I do this. Like, it, it was just for me to close and now I see people using this. I'm like, oh, I've I've made something. It's but distinctive. yeah, I think it's, it's just 
yeah, it was just for me to close the name and just like, it was easy, I guess, just to change the like bars and in, in Tumblr and everything. So yeah, I like it. I like All that right. you, I like that you spot that because it's like, it's something that I like to, like I do literally every, every time. It's very, it's very specific. And yeah, you do see it in certain in certain places now. But again, the name and the, the the double slash it really, I don't know, goes a long way for me first finding you. Right, obviously, your art stands out. We're gonna get to all of that. But beyond just the art, those little details, those little nuances, I, I I've always found that they mean a lot. Hey, yeah. we gotta get. We have a guest. Introduce your guest. Yeah, he's al he's always every time. Okay, every time I'm I'm calling or something, he's always come coming to see me. What's This his name? Iggy. 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 Yeah. How old is Iggy? Uh, he's two years and a half now. Okay. Almost okay. two years. Yeah. Have you had it? Have you had Iggy since he was a puppy? Um, not since he has a puppy. We, we had him because like, um, so basically our vet, we, we, we used to have a, another border collie that passed away two years ago. Um, she was only like two years old. It was pretty wild. And I like, I'm not going to get into all these details right now, but, Uh, or vets in that time she received a border collie because a family couldn't take care of this guy because he was too crazy uh so we just said oh yeah we're gonna take him like we we want we wanted a second border collie because charlie was sick and like we wanted her to have company and turn, turns out that this guy is not crazy at all he's just like so smooth and so nice so we got pretty lucky to have this guy Oh man, that's good. Congra congratulations. I was going to ask you if, if he was still crazy, but it sounds like it all worked out. He's so smooth. Yeah. Very calm. Especially for a border collie. Yeah. We, we have a, we have a, the opposite. Well, well, it sounds like Iggy is not crazy, but we have the, the laziest tiny little uh, terrier chihuahua at home. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> And then he's an old guy. He's an old guy. <laughs> nice. All right. Let's get back to you. So, yeah. all right. We got the, we got the name, we got the double slash, but now take your, So origin stories, right? Take your origin story back as far as you personally want to go. Um, where does the legend of Fuck Render begin? <laughs> the legend. Uh, I mean, it started when I was working at Romeo, uh, uh, Italian restaurants in on on uh, on uh, Mont Royal in in Montreal, and I was working about 40 hours, 50 hours a week, and I was like, I, I used to be a quite big cyclist i was doing like a, a fixed gear race and like I, i i done montreal to boston in like three days and with a fixed gear i was doing a lot like uh, long distance uh, cycling and stuff like this i did like a couple of criterium and stuff like this um but i had like a after, when i came back from boston i um, i had two vertebrae that was displaced so my My C C yeah C seven and L 3 were displaced and they were going that direction. So all my left side was completely numb. Um, so I could still work, but it, it it really like bummed me out and like I stopped doing cycling because at first my first thought when I was when I had all the left side numb, I was having heart issues. Like that was like my main thing. It was like I have an heart attack or I have like a a problem with my art so and I, i'm not the kind of person that goes to the hospital so i for for a long time even still today i think i'm gonna die a, of a heart attack every day but that's another that's another uh, other topic but like so yeah so i decided to fill these hours that i have left that i had left in my weeks to learn something new so i just i tried a couple things and i And, and I fell for 3D arts and I was like, oh shit, like this is actually interesting. And I, I've, I've seen like a couple artists uh, on Tumblr and I was like, oh, okay. Like, I really like where this is going. I, I could see myself doing this. So basically I was working in the restaurant from four to 11. And every day I was waking up at like, maybe eight or nine, I was working on my computer until I go to work. I was finishing my shift at the restaurant. I was going to the bar where my girlfriend, Joe, was uh, working at the time. And I was, at midnight, I was there on my computer, my big headphones, watching tutorials, do, doing like 3D. 
until the bar closed. So yeah, I, I was drinking a lot and learning 3D. It was it was such a, a crazy time because like so many people were making fun of me, like working at the bar. Yeah. Like just like they, they, they were like, oh, what what are, what game, what video games are you playing? Are you playing StarCraft or World of Warcraft or stuff like this? And I was like, fuck you guys. I'm just like <laughs> you guys don't I'm get just it. trying to learn something. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, so that so that truly is that the beginning of the legend, right? You sitting at the bar, right at yeah. one a.m. You know, learn learning something, and maybe even thinking that you were dying because you were so you had this localized pain <laughs> that you thought was a <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, for so long, I stopped. So literally, I used to be like really in shape, and I stopped doing completely physical activities for uh, three years because I every day I was thinking I was dying of a heart attack like I was I was climbing stairs and I and, and I remember I was on, on Mont Royal there's like a couple of stairs when you go on on the mount on the the mountain and I was climbing and I my art I had like a this uh no I didn't add this watch yet but like I was calculating my 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 art beat yeah and I probably made a mistake but I was like at 240 oh that's not so, good <laughs> not good no but i was probably at 160 but right. i probably miscalculate and it's something i started to f lose it i started to freak out i started to, like my vision went blind and i was like i'm dying i'm dying right there there's no one with me i'm like i was but it was just a panic attack mm -hmm. so after that i i stopped doing all sort of exercise because i was like i'm i'm just not gonna do exercises because I, I otherwise I'll fucking die. Like I'll have a heart attack. So, so yeah, that was that was pretty wild. What a what a time, right? Are, now, do you, are you through that today? Are you through that that time today? Do you feel at, at oh yeah, pretty much, pretty much every day. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna die of a heart attack. Like literally, still, still today. But I still do like jumping rope every day. I do like exercise. I. This is like the main reason I, I really want to get into hiking, but like I'm so scared to go hike and something happened to me and like there's no signals and stuff like this, but I'm really working hard on this. Um, this is mainly why I create like landscape and stuff like this. It allows me to travel without traveling, but I'm really, really working on this. I've, I've, been, I've been doing way better than like three, four years ago. Uh, but it's still such a big work in progress, honestly. And it's interesting in, in terms of how that might come through in your work, like you said, like the lands, the landscapes <clears throat> that you create and the visuals that you create. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's all like place I want to go that I can go. It's like it's like locked locked uh, destination for me, kind of. It's interesting. Yeah, create create where you want to be. Yeah. Exactly. And, and, I create, feel like, and and obviously create where others want to be too, right? I think you're learning you're learning that, right? In terms of the success and how far your work is going. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah, I think it, I, I like to create environments. Like I, I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one having being in a similar situation. So I'm like, if I can make people travel with me in that metaverse or like fuck renderverse kind of, it's like I like that's my goal. Like I just want to be able to give an experience to people that they can feel through my art and i feel like yeah 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 well i'll i'll i'll, I'll give you one back when i was uh, very comfortable sharing when i was 18 to 24 uh definitely had some some high level anxiety to the point that any long trip that i would take whether it was a car trip whether it was a plane trip whether it was a train trip um if it was over 45 minutes even I had to have like a water bottle and a little snack and I would nurse the water bottle and the snack because I, I was, this. yeah, right. Because I was, I was, co I was conscious of my breathing. It felt like I, I, I knew it was happening and was too focused on it. And it felt like, yeah, it felt like it could end at any moment. It's fucking crazy. I, I like, I have this, like, uh, even like today I can drive more than like 30 minutes alone. Otherwise I start to panic a little bit, not like crazy panic, but I, I just like, I'm like, hey, I'm pretty far from home. I could, I could die right now. So it's like, it's so fucking stupid. But at the same time, it's, yeah, I think it's like post-traumatic to some, some events for sure. Uh, but yeah, it's well, interesting. 
Yeah. And the nice thing is, is that, well, two things, right? One, you're literally doing something about it, right? You're, you're creating something that is creating art that is calming, right? Is, is a very specific type of experience for both you and mm -hmm. for the, for the collector or the end user. Um, but the other thing is that I can share being that, you know, I went through a pretty long stretch where that was the case for me. I don't necessarily feel like that anymore. And I feel like it, it turns the corner at some point. And I think a lot of it is incremental, right? Incremental, like in terms of yep. going for those hikes and doing the, the, the short one first, right? The short one with the of course, yeah. fires confidence and then step by step by step, taking it further and further. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's, that's hundred percent what it is. Yeah. I think just doing the small step every day that will allow you in five years to be able to do what you wanted to do. Exactly. It's like compound effects. It's just compound, like, compound it's, effects. It's, yeah, it's just a regular, not regular, but it's just like a, a proven uh, phenomenon or yeah, phenomenon. mathematic equation. So let's, so let's take that and let's bring that to your work, right? So this compounding yep. effect, right? So you're sitting yep. at the bar and you're learning and you're learning and say, hey, for, forget you guys, I'm doing my thing, right? And then uh, where, where in that process, and I have a hunch it's pretty early, but I want to hear it from you. Where does the first one come in? What, what do you mean? So the, the, fir the first table, I call it the first table, right? Okay, yeah. The, do you mean where I did this or? Yeah, so, so okay, you make a decision, right, to start learning, yeah. right? Yeah. And so when do you create the first one? Yeah. Um, I think you create the first one when you're exploring the mm -hmm. tools you have. And, like, to me, it was just, like, it was just like trying to learn. I was doing tutorials and I was just like sitting on my computer and just like trying to get my head around this insanely complicated UI design of a 3D software. Uh, yeah. I think the first one is like, it's, it comes when, when, you, when you do something about it, not like just think about, like there's so many things that like, I talk with people that they, they have so many ideas, but they never do it because they don't do the, the pro they don't want to do the process. And I feel it's just when you when you put your ends on the on in the making, it's like it's it's when it's it's all start to happen. It's like uh that action it's like that act of putting yourself out there right it's not just yeah the, exactly it's not just the learning it becomes the doing and there's a risk in that right even if it's a risk just to yourself uh, and then obviously yeah. late, later a risk even more so because you're putting it out to others and then there's judgment and then there's valuations that are involved oh yeah my first work was judged so much by my co my, especially like some co-workers were like oh you're doing some drawings now and it wasn't drawings it was just like it was just so bad what I was doing and they were like kind of making fun, which which is fair because like I was starting, but like, yeah. So it's, it's yeah, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to imagine where this can go when you, when like five, six years ago, there wasn't like much like digital artists. Like there was like people that were, was working in the industry, but like digital artists, you were talking about like people and maybe a couple others, but like, it was very limited. Right. So the, for, for those who might not know, the first one is a table, right? It is yep. a table in a room. Uh, it's on known yep. origin now, uh, which is one yep. of the multiple places that your art lives. Uh, yep. So, so why, why a table and why, uh, why that room? Why the wood floor? Man, I was lacking of imagination, I guess. It, it just like, I was just trying to do something, you know? I was just trying to like, there, like, there was no like, oh, like I need to do a table in an in a empty room, you know? It was just like, oh, there's a table there. Why don't try to recreate it? But like, yeah. And I was like trying to give effects to the wood. It, it's, it's so this artwork is so bad but so good at the same time because uh -huh. like to me every time i see it i see where i am at, where i'm at right now and i'm like i can't believe i started there like it's it's crazy it's it's very crazy well i'm a huge fan of story and context right i believe in the 
the story and the context adding so much to the to the art itself. And I think it really is the, the merger of all of those factors. And so seeing the first one and even the name with, you know, it's the first one, it's in your caps, it's with the double slash, you have the story, it's how everything started, it's the first five hours, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? The like the literal first five hours of your career. Um, and like you said, when you look back at it, you see it in contrast with where you are now. And then of course, what's probably in your head is where you're going, of course. Exactly, yeah. I can't wait to be like, 10 years down and be like looking at this work and I'll be like oh and even 10 years from now looking at the work I'm doing right now it's going to be totally different like it's I'm I, I like it pretty pretty much every year I, I'm trying to reinvent myself as much as I can um just to, so I can stay like in focus with like new clients and stuff like this so so new clients staying in focus with new clients let's go all the way back right so all right you're learning you're at the bar <laughs> doing your thing you create the first one you're getting better and better and better and how does that translate who, who is your first client um first client was um a music video for brown he's a artist um is is an artist that made a solo project is he's, he's from dead obese it's like a it used to be a big um quebec uh, rap group and uh so yeah, I got I got approached to do like floating fetus in the music video, and I never animated anything. I never did anything like this before, and I said, yeah, of course I can do this. It's so easy, and I I I really I to to my perspective, I really nailed this project. It, it was like my my first gig, and it looks so good. Even today, it's the project looks so good, um, but the old team that worked on this, they were like very talented as well so but yeah it's like it started there and after especially at that time it was like a pretty uh it was a pretty good paycheck for me that I was working in a restaurant and like like I I had this kind of big amount of money in in one in, in one time and I was like oh I could actually do this for a living so it really changed my perspe perspective on like all this working in a restaurant and learning 3d art i was like yeah yeah so then from that moment right from that moment where this thought in your head you say hey this this could be my thing like this this could be my thing i see an opportunity here um how long did it take until you fully transitioned over about a year and a year and a half i was able to do freelance full-time mm -hmm. which is very fast i feel very fast um yeah and that's a pretty powerful concept for someone else right who who may be hearing this and maybe in the earlier stages of that process like just hearing that now i i know this about you but i hear like sometimes you'll say you know you're putting in an 80 or 90 hour week right um you're working hard but i think it's yeah. key for someone else to know that if you do improve upon those skills i mean that time that timeline's pretty fast to, to fully transition a career over yeah but there's also one thing that i want to say it's like i don't want to vouch for 90 hours a week because i've Fair. i've been i've been through uh, literally three burnout in five years and it was all because i worked way too much uh i feel now it's a little bit different because all these hours i'm putting them for myself it's mm -hmm. not for client work mostly it's mostly for my nifty drop so I feel this is way less stressful than like putting 80 hours a week for client work. I, I just want to say like, if like someone who thinks putting 90 hours a week to do client work, it just, it, it can be dangerous. So just be careful with that. And I'm all in for like work hard, but like, no, it's important to know your limits because mm -hmm. once you have a burnout, it can really, really fuck you up. Like it can really, really fuck you up. So let me go this, this way then, if someone's hearing that, and if you, with the benefit of past experience, now, of course, sometimes someone has to walk their own road. Sometimes someone has to go through their own burnout, come out the other side to figure yeah. it out. But let's say yeah. someone is hearing that, if you could go back with the benefit of past experience, what may be preceding one or multiple burnouts, what's something that you could have done differently to maybe get almost or, or the equal result in a positive sense, but not have experienced that low, low? Yeah, exactly. I think the most important is like physical activities and sleep. If you don't have this, it's you can you can be fully creative. Like there is no chances. Like if you don't go out and you don't 
wander around your city or nature or stuff like this you, there's you're gonna you're just gonna do repetitive stuff and like you're just gonna create stuff that has already been made because you're the only inspiration you have is internet and pinterest and instagram or twitter so it's like i feel like this i think sleep is important and i feel like being able to say no is one of the most important thing because sometimes I said yes to project that was like literally killing me. Like it was, I, I, and, I, and I knew from the start that I should say no to these, these projects, but I was like, I need to be able to pay my rent because like when you're freelancing, it's like, you never know when you're not gonna have jobs. So it's like, you're always taking everything. But for me, I was, I was receiving a, quite large amount of work so I was just saying yes to everything and I it just like burned me out so going back maybe there were a few a few spots where you could have said selective no's specifically to the yeah. work that was oh, really yeah. taking something away from you yeah I feel like I feel pretty much when you feel like it's not gonna work just it's a it's a good rule to not just take it trust your intuition like yeah exactly so let's talk about what what did work, right? Let's fast forward a little bit. And I want to get to some of your artworks that I think, uh, at least as I was exploring, I call it the legend of Fuck Render, right? As I was exploring the legend, um, where I started was on Super Rare. And it was looking through your portfolio on Super Rare and seeing some of those incredible one-on-ones and a, a lot of the amazing collectors that have found those over the past uh, bunch of months. But uh, let me not go where I want to go. Where do you want to go on Super Rare first? Maybe pick... Uh, the work there that means something unique to you or means the most to you? Um, so you mean like one artwork from, from Super Rare? Yes. Um, so I'm not even on Super Rare yet, but I'm pretty sure I'll say shared vision. Mm -hmm. um, no, no, yeah. don't go there yet. Don't go there yet. I'm going to go there later. Okay. I promise I have, uh, I'll, we're going to go to shared vision in a, in a different way. I mean, one of the, um, one of the earlier works that, that changed the game for you or that popped or okay that... okay okay not, not nothing from super rare like just from my own portfolio well all right let me i was, I was yeah, yeah go there go there anything from your own portfolio that changed that changed the game for you um i think i i t it's it's really really hard to say like i think i, w I wouldn't say one artwork in, in specific but i feel like exploring different textures i think like I really love playing with like flowers. Uh, I really love it because like to me, I, I, I don't know, like I, I've lost a lot of people in, in, in my life, like I, like family and stuff like this. And to me, like flowers is like, it's always like, I, I really love like the, the blooming flowers. I feel it's like the essence of like life and stuff like this. Um, I, I, I like I understand that now a lot of people start using flowers and their work but like to me it's it's it, it has such an emotional connection um, and I just feel like all working around like these kind of items like chains and like flowers and like snake scales and just like different te Scorpions, textures yeah. is like yeah exactly it's just like they all have like some sort of meanings to me um, and we, we could go really deep into all the meanings of, of all this at some point. Uh, but yeah, I think it's just like I, me trying to do more meaningful art instead of just like doing whatever. And I feel like it's like I used to do daily renders and I feel like doing daily renders, it's really easy to lose the sense of like, um, of meaning and like, because you're just trying to put one artwork out there and just like poop it. So, but to me, how I see it in the long term, is it was like, uh, not every renders as a meaning, but some uh, some of some of them have like some really deep meaning of how I felt that day or something happened to me or like memories or stuff like this. So it's like, so yeah, it's 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 just a like to me, it's just a collection of like, it's like a. It's like a, a, a dairy journal, you know? You wrote, you wrote yourself a story. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's pretty much like how I... So th th this is why, like, there's no one render that is like, oh, this one is a game changer. It's like, 
they all have their their meaning and like they all have some sort of meaning to me and it's just like a a can you hear me yeah a constant yeah. um exploration and just like learning learning new things and new textures every day is, yeah so let's go back to some of the older super rare works I'll, I'll drop yep. them on you one at a time and, you know, just whether it's, uh, tell us where that story marker was for you, what, what maybe the artwork represented. Because one of the most beautiful things to me about your artwork is this juxtaposition. You have these sharp elements, right? These fragments, these shards, these chains, these scorpions or snakes. And then you offset this with such a, a, a beautiful uh, curvature, you know, color play, softness. And I, I really enjoy how you weave those elements together. Um, one of the, the works that stands out so much to me is Broken Beauty. Uh, so, I love it so much, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, it's just like, like honestly, like uh, these, this one has like so different meanings to me because like I've created this one uh, while I was like in a, a burnout. And it was my first burnout. It was like uh, during Christmas uh, three years ago. Um, four years ago, no, three years ago. It was during Christmas and I was working on a very complicated project and everything. And I, I, and I had my first burnout and I was like, oh, like I can't work anymore. I can't do 3D anymore. Like literally I was going on my computer. I, I was having anxiety and panic attack. It was, I think it was two years ago actually. And so it really like fucked me up because I was like, oh, but this is the only thing I know how to do. And it did, it's my life now. I like, this is what I do. I do 3D. And like, so what I did is like, I, every day I was doing 15 minutes uh, work. Uh, uh, like, uh, I don't know what to say in English, but like 15 minutes uh, work time. Mm -hmm. and like, so every, like I would do 15 minutes on my computer. I was having a panic attack. I was doing something else. I was doing another 15 minutes of that day and I was doing renders like this. Like I was keeping, I, I kept doing daily render that time, even if I was like having massive panic attack. And I had to, and I used to work from like, I used to work really late and I had to change my whole life and do work from 5 a.m. to uh, noon and call it the day because I couldn't work past noon. I couldn't, if I was working past noon, I was having like, big anxiety big like panic attack and i was feeling so weird and it really freaked me out because i didn't want to lose everything i did in the past sure um so and now like i'm one of the thing i'm most proud is like like this week i was working on my game it was like midnight it was midnight and i was like oh shit it's midnight i, sh I shouldn't be working i should be I, so i started to freak out i was like dude like it's chill like i'm i'm working I, I i'm enjoying this but i still felt the stress i was feeling like three two years ago at, uh, at noon but, right the, the stress that you were no, feeling midnight. at noon yeah but now it's midnight right so uh, so so you see like all of these like 15 minutes but like in the, the, that old time like so i started at noon so after three months i was like okay 1 p.m yeah 2 p.m 3 p.m 4 p.m and like for a long time, I was stuck at like 6, 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. That was like literally last year when we lived in South Surrey uh, in Crescent Beach. Uh, I, was, I wouldn't be able to work past 6, 7. And when COVID started, my girlfriend was still working uh, later at night. And I had nothing to do. I was alone at my, at my house. And I was like, okay, I'll, I need to do something. So I was just like working on my computer. And I was, be, I was being able to work till 8, 9 and it's crazy how like it's probably one of the things I'm most proud is like overcoming this big depression and like big burnout that like I could just have quit doing 3D and go back work in a restaurant or something. It. Exactly. And but I was like I was really stubborn that I didn't want that to happen. Uh and it was so challenging. At like the first week, it was so challenging. Like I I was really scared to lose everything I I did just because of this, but here I am. And so, so two thoughts, two thoughts. Number one, that's how you're going to go hiking again, right? 12 to one to two to three, right? Yeah, exactly. 
That's one thought. And yeah. the second thought is, so that's the birth of broken beauty. So it's during this time when, you, you know, in the moment you were losing it, you were thinking, is, can I do this anymore? And in 15 minute increments, you produce this incredible, you know, game changing in the, uh, in the fuck render verse, right? This game changing artwork. Yeah, exactly. This is, yeah, this is exactly it. And I, I just feel, and like Broken Beauty is like, this is why like the, the work I put on Super Air is like, like I've done so many work and like, of course they're not all meaningful and they're not, they don't have like a crazy story or anything. I think, but the, the one I put on Super Air or, or the one I'm creating for Nifty, they all have such a, a background for me. And, and yeah, they, they, they like, I'm not gonna put like anything that doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. I'm not like, I'm not treating super as like I would treat Instagram example. Yep. That makes a lot of sense. And yeah, even if, even if what I would say is even if the specific artwork doesn't have, you know, its own incredible story to it, it's still set in the backdrop of your overarching story. Right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like they don't like, they don't have like insane meaning like all the time, but like I'm, it's, I think it's the whole work in progress or progression that is important at the end of the day. It's not just like, it's important to have a, a story to back what you're, what you're putting out there and selling. But like, I feel sometimes we can just get lost in a beautiful image and just like appreciate the work that went towards this, you know? No question. No question. Let me ask you about one more on Super Rare. Let me ask you about Rewire. And we're, I promise we're going to get to the other one. We're going to get to the other one a little bit later. But uh, let me ask you about Rewire. Yeah, so that was exactly in the same time of like A Broken Beauty. Uh, I read a lot about, about rewiring your brain. And this is exactly where I took the 15 minutes uh, increments and like one hour increments. To, it's, it's like it's the best way to rewire your brain and just like understand that like what you experience right now is not what you're going to experience in five years. And like there's ways to attribute certain feelings and like certain uh, moments and to reconstruct the brain in, in, in favor of like a better experience or like just, just it's, it's the, the name it sells itself. Like it's rewiring, re rewriting. It's like, yeah, it's just like taking something bad that happened, but like make it, making it in something maybe more positive or just like create an experience out of it kind of. I love this messaging, right? Going in, uh, you know, as we talk about your art, it's so clear that it represents your own journey. I love that, right? You're, you know, you're even, it's like you're going back and forth between um, your artistic skill and talent, but also almost, I know sometimes it has a negative connotation, but also almost like a, like a motivational speaker, like a self, like a uh, self-improvement. I appreciate that so much. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I enjoy that interplay. So maybe if I could just pause here and ask you, in that rewiring journey, what's, I don't know, give me one actionable tip, throw it out there. What was something that helped you in your own rewiring journey? Yeah, I think the, the 15 minutes at a time, just breaking down like, like if like, like example, like I, I couldn't go to the gym because it was stressing me out. So what I did is I went to the gym 10 minutes just to go run on treadmill. I did that for a week. After I stayed 20 minutes, so I did a couple exercises. After that, I did 30 minutes, just so until like I could be able to do a one full hour of workout. And it took me, it, like people can think it's fucking crazy to do this. And like it, people that never experienced something like this, but like it makes so much sense to just like, just the action of going there makes the routine and makes it like, oh, I'm there. Like, why would I just stay here for 10 minutes? So it's like rewiring your brain that is like, if, if you can do it 10 minutes, why well, I can do it 20 minutes or 30 minutes. And, and but the, com the comparison is if you do, if you start and do 10 minutes for a month and after you do, oh, I did 10 minutes, I'll do an hour. You're, mm -hmm. There's chance that you're going to burn yourself and be like, oh, like my heart is pounding. Am, am I dying? Or like, so mm -hmm. it's just like, yeah, I, I think that's the best tip I would have for rewriting your brain. I love that. It, it speaks so, so well to two principles, right? One's a psychological principle. 
uh, and one's just, I guess, a general principle, but the, the general principle is the power of constraint, right? Applying constraint mm -hmm. to something, which maybe isn't even the intent at first, right? You're doing 15 minutes because you can only do 15 minutes at that time. But adding that constraint when you know I'm here for 15 minutes and then I'm going to break, like I'm out of there, 16th minute. You're going to yep. get a lot done in those 15 minutes. You're going to apply yeah, intense exactly. focus to those 15 minutes and powerful things can happen. Yep. Then the psychological principle is that of small wins, right? Just, just building up, allowing yourself to say just 10, that's good. But then, but yep. then not, not, ah, I just did 10. To, no, that's a win. It's like checking the box. It's like a, a pat on the back. It's like, I did my 10 and that's a good thing, not a bad thing. And then of course you built forward off of that. I love that. Exactly. That's exactly it. Yeah. All right, so that's that's super rare. I want to jump to, and again, I promise we're going to come back to some of your present works. But I want to, I'm going down uh, the origin story timeline here, and I want to arrive next at the first Nifty Gateway drop. And yep. what I remember so distinctly about that drop was your promo video, because this was yep. right when right when I was really exploring your work and getting to know you. And I see this promo video, and it was grand. It felt big. It felt like greater than your art even, right? That you would yeah, just, yeah, yeah. oh man, there's this vision here. So take me into to you releasing so, that promo video. Okay, funny story. Like, So the main thing with this teaser, I wanted to make it look uh, kind of satiric, like mm -hmm. humoristic. I don't know if it, I don't think people like at this vision, but like to me it was just like, I just wanted to make something like hyper realistic and like just crazy and like I just wanted to have fun and just create something like some like something grand but like at the same time like kind of satiric because I feel like we're always trying to like prove ourselves that is like we need to do the best thing and everything so I was like okay I, and I was talking with my my friend Luca who did the editing and I was like okay how can we make this like look like a almost like a marvel show like or something yeah. like just something crazy and he, he actually came up with like the old editing ideas and i was like at first i was i was kind of skeptical because i was like mm, it can it can it can look a little bit corny but like i i said off oh, like fuck it let's do it let's let's do it and it turned out really well like i think people appreciated like this kind of like teaser i think it was i think it was fun uh, and i was gonna say for me the satire did not come through <laughs> and i just exactly that's i looked at it and I, I it was a holy shit moment for me i said wow this is that's nice yeah i need i need but to pay attention right i need to pay attention yeah. here well i'm really glad that it did that and like maybe if it if it, it had been too much satiric maybe people would have been oh that's not even funny or something so i'm glad that how it turned out it turned out really well it, it definitely did. And then you went on to have a, a quite a successful drop. I mean, how did, how did that drop yeah. line up to your expectations? Did, you know, or, or I guess better to ask, what did you expect going into that drop? Um, I didn't expect much because I don't like to set expectation. It's, it's a very dangerous thing to do. Uh, but honestly, like I was, I was really stoked on the, I was really stoked on the uh, outcome. Like, I've never made that much money in five minutes. Let's yeah. just say like, let's let's just say that. So, so I think that's to me that was pretty interesting. Um, I feel it could have been better with better promoting and bringing my Instagram uh, full of followers aboard mm -hmm. on board. I mean, and it's something I really missed out. It's just like I almost haven't like tell my instagram followers and it's it's there that i have the most and like it could have i could have brought maybe new new uh, art collectors or something and it's something I'm, I'm i'm gonna try to do in my next drop uh february 11 i'm just gonna try to bring more instagram followers and like just open like even on my facebook profile my personal facebook profile where i have all these high school person that I don't talk, I, ne I, I never talked in 10 years. They, they're all asking me questions about NFTs and like crypto yeah. and stuff like this. I'm like, so this, uh, to me, this is exactly where it, it begins. It's like my high school friends from a small town that is like never, 
probably never heard about crypto or NFTs. And it's it's how you get the word spread. And like, I feel like this is where I, I should have added like for my next job. It's like opening this insanely and incl inclusive world to a more public area, I guess. But yeah, to, to your point, you get that opportunity this time around, right? The next yeah, time, exactly. the next no, exactly. time you get to go down that road. Yeah, exactly. Um, so let's see. So that so that drop, you you had a number of different things going on. You had an open edition. You had um, an out of twenty fast. I call it fastest finger competition. Uh, you had the silent auction, right? Silent auction for five bloomed, and then you had yeah. the one the one of one auction for for multiple pathways. So you really yeah. did go down every single road of how someone could acquire a, a piece of your art. Yeah, exactly. I just wanted to make sure, like, it's, I, I want to have, like, all sorts of um, range. I, and it was, like, the first drop, so it's, like, it's always, you don't want to put your price too high because you want to make sure to sold out because if you don't sold out, it's, like, yeah. I don't know, it, it, it can be, I, 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 I'd rather sold out than not sold out, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um but now next drop price are going to be a little bit higher, I think. Um, and it's going to be more limited as well. Or yeah, it's going to be interesting. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited to see where it goes, but, but yeah, I remember being quite disappointed at first that night because I missed out on the fastest finger competition, but then fortunately I was able to get involved in the silent auction and, 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 uh, proud, proud owner of bloom number one. So that's crazy yeah yeah congrats on this it's uh, like it's it's probably one of my favorite one and this one is like so i did a, a very big mural in montreal uh, yeah. near uh one of the biggest uh, mural of Le leonard cohen in montreal okay and so i got the opportunity of 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 painting bloom uh on on a very massive wall in montreal and it was such a crazy opportunity for me and i feel like th to me this one has like such a meaning about this because like the, this whole series is like like it's it's all about like grief and uh it rewriting your brain um, and we've discussed it privately you and i about this job but like the all of these pieces are like the from start to finish to uh kind of a, a grief but also like uh how to rewire your brain to to feel better and like to understand like there's not only one path there's multiple paths and like you're blowing after a, a broken situation and like there's it it's like it's but it's so like people that just see this and have no uh, explication they, they don't they won't understand that and that's what i wanted i wanted people to be able to express their own their own vision of this drop if that makes sense it does. And it's the most powerful form of art. And I, I will say that, you know, until I fully understood, understood your story, I think I probably keep pieces of that were conveyed to me. Right. But then when I took a look back at the exact naming, like even just the names that you used for your pieces throughout that drop, you know, you look broadly, right. The drop self growth. Right. And then you, yeah. and then you dive in there and you have the repressed and broken and then bloomed and then multiple pathways. It really does tells it tells a story in in terms of yeah. the naming that you used yeah exactly and I, I like I, I didn't want it to make it too personal because I want people to be able to feel what they want to feel through this mm -hmm. um, but yeah like to me that has a very specific meaning but I like I like having other people express their own feeling not my feeling you know that makes a lot of sense let's go with the let's go with the specific feeling let's go with the special feeling. And then now I teased it earlier, but I want to go to one of your current works on Super Rare, uh, yep. posted pretty recently, but that's Share Vision, right? So <clears throat> yep. my first question about Share Vision, it is the only work that I could find of fuck renders that is lowercase, not capital. Is that intentional? That was a mistake, actually. Oh, no. <laughs> that was actually a, a typo mistake. Just go with it. That's crazy. Just, no, just go with it. It was like, no, this is the yeah. most special artwork. And uh, no, and honestly, I... like, yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not gonna try to make like a meaning of like a mistake like this, like, but the, 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 like, yeah, like, 
I think mistakes is is human. Uh, yeah, for sure. That's 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 a plain, full on mistake, and I and I'm, I'm not ashamed of it. Like it's. Well, I, yeah. I, I'll be honest. I kind of find it charming. That that's a. Uh, like I'm a, I'm a rarity guy. I come from, you know, my back background as a kid, I used to collect sports cards and I, I nice. you know, I'm very familiar with like collectibles and variants. It is the only fuck render piece that is lowercase. I, that's, that's an interesting thing in my mind. That's true. Maybe we can, uh, I could, I could lie a story about now. I'm, no, that's no, the thing. No, I'm not gonna, yeah, no. I'm not gonna lie a story about like, if like there's a couple of artwork that has no meaning and I'm not gonna lie and no. make like, Oh, there's a crazy like liquid tempered it's just like it was just experiment there's no like there's that there's no meaning on, in this one like if there's no meaning i'm not i'm not gonna lie one you know yeah but to go back to what we were just talking about that the the meaning doesn't always have to be specific right it's representative yeah, of, your, exactly. of, of who you are and your overarching story anyway so yeah uh, it's kind of fun in that regard in that regard but yeah but go with but go into share vision what is that what is that all about okay so share vision to me like it's, it's it was like Share vision and ether connected are really, really uh, similar to me, uh, because I've been being able to discuss with collectors and having the same ideology and like, like my my circle of friends are not people that like investing and they don't like uh, they they most of my friends are scared of money, and to me that's always been something that is interesting to me. I like investing. I like uh, learning about it. I like, I like the new crypto. I like diversifying my portfolio. And it's something that has always been something so, so interesting to me, even when I was really young, because I come from, I come from a family that is, I wouldn't say wealthy, but I've seen, I've seen my dad make, make a, a lot of money. And I, I've seen my dad lose everything and not make any money. And I've seen my dad from, not having anything left to building a very successful company. Uh, and so like from this really young age, like I, I really, I was always interested about like money and stuff like this. Um, and shared vision, I was talking with, with a couple of collectors about like diverse, diversifying my portfolio and like learning more about like the new era of like digital art and stuff like this. And to me, it was like, we, we were sharing that vision and we, I, we had this together when we talked privately and like we shared the same vision on on some something it's, it's like i feel like this new era of like crypto art it it uh, it allows me to make connection that wouldn't be able to do it within my circle of friends because all most of my friends are scared of money they they don't want to make more because they don't want to pay more taxes and to me the more taxes i pay the better it is at the end of the day. The better at you're doing. At the yeah. end of the year. Yeah. But yeah. So it's, it's, so it's this, this new, and it is, it's really a new era of connection, right? New era of connection. Yeah. I, I love that it, it represents that because, yeah, I've been involved in a lot of, a lot of conversations that's just marveling right now at what's going on, right? That the community right now is growing so fast, but has stayed, mm -hmm. to this point at least, has stayed so positive, Right. It's very, exactly. even, even just jumping on, on Twitter and being like being able to interact with you at first on Twitter, right? That was how we first connected and, and, and evolved this. And that's a pretty special thing to, to be involved yeah. in those types of communications. And it's crazy because like, I like example on Instagram, I don't get involved with my followers that much. Like I, I receive so many weird DMs and like so many like weird, weird stuff and like weird requests and like, or just like, Hey, you need to share my work on your Instagram. You're famous or something like, and I feel on Twitter, it's more like, I really appreciate the people there. And I, I really appreciate like the connection I'm making with, with like artists and collectors or not, not even artists or not even collectors. I just feel like it's, 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 I like, I like sharing IDs with people on Twitter and, with this new crypto art era it's like i don't know and, and crazy. Not, it's like an opportunity yeah, to interact uh to interact at a deeper level you know and maybe things change maybe as things grow uh maybe it goes a different direction but at least right now it does it does very much feel like a, a special place and a special time um exactly yeah so so fucker and i want to start shifting into uh, we're not gonna 
we're not going to get there yet, but there's, I'm going to give you a 10, a 10 stop lightning round. All right. That's coming, but let's, let's get a little quicker with these other two that I want to touch on before we go today. Yep. And then we're going to hit the lightning round. So okay. Thorn, talk to me. It's Thorn. a collabor It's a collaboration, right? Very important. Yeah. With, collaboration. Uh... Yeah, with a good friend of mine, uh, Toki. So it's uh, Jen. We've been working together for so long. Uh, like, the 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 name the name is not linked to any meaning. It's just like it's just because it's like how can I explain? Um, so Jen and I have been working together for four years now. I've been work. I've like I've traveled with her so many times. We've been in Trona and Trona Pinnacles near uh, LA last mm -hmm. last summer, just after my dad passed away, actually like a week or, or two after my dad passed away. Um, and we've built like we've built like this connection of like working together, but like now it's like we wanted to create something together um, on a crypto art level. Um, but yeah, it's like, I feel like this artwork is just like a result of like what happened this year and like all, all the weird, like it's, it's weird that we can go out. It's weird that like we can do anything. It's, it's like, we wanted to express some sort of like feelings that we had towards what's happening, but yeah, it's, a, it's, I, I wouldn't say there's no like insane story like the other like Broken Beauty mm -hmm. example, but it's, it's, it was more an expression of like how 2020 felt. Like it's like we, we st I feel now we're starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel and mm -hmm. that's the end holding the lights. Uh, but there's still so much like painful thing that we will have to do. And like there's, there's a lot of painful conversation I had to add with my family like extend family that is like they don't believe in covid and like they don't they so and there's like so many difficult discussion to have and like and i like to be proven wrong and like to me like how i see it i like i like to think it's the most dangerous thing that we have right now and like i want to do everything in in uh, in possible to do uh, to be as most sec as secure possible, and I like to be. And if if I, if I was wrong and it, it was a hoax, like like I, I like to be proven wrong, but I like to take the se the secure step to prevent anything. But anyway, that's a that's a totally. I think I, I went a little bit off track on this one, but yeah, that's what it's all about. We go off track all yep. around, you know, pull it back. But yeah. so Thorn represents a comp uh, a complicated year, so it's. It's coming together, right? It's a collaboration to represent a complicated yeah. year. And I, I told you this, I watched that piece on loop probably four, five, six times before I shut it off. Nice. It's very um, meditative, right? Yeah, I really, I really like this one. Yeah, it's, um, and it's, it's, I feel it's so simple, but so complex at the same time. That's, that's my favorite kind of artwork. artwork. You know, that, that it initially strikes you. Yeah, it's just so, so simple and soothing, but then... You take a second, you think about it, you think about it, and it resonates on that deeper level. Yeah. Um, what about your Axie art? Oh, yeah. That, that's just, like, I that's just for fun. Like, I, I really, really, really enjoy this game, and I really enjoy the community around. And I really, I, I'm a strong new believer that this game is going to blow up, and it's going to be, it's the future of NFT games, for sure. And I just wanted to, it's more like a fan art and like appreciation of what they're doing. And to me, like all, all the money for, for this. So, so my, my, my goal is like, if I, if I'm able to sell uh, the 10 pieces, I know you bought one actually, and thank you so much for this. And no, if I can. Number one, number one. Yeah. Add, I'm adding to my number one fuck render collection. Exactly. I haven't promoted uh, enough yet, but what I want to do is if I sell all of these, I want to be able to give uh, 10 axes to new members uh, so they can like enjoy the game and understand the game and like people that are not really aware of this game and the rest of the profit goes for me to buy a mystic uh, axes, which is my, my, my short-term goal is to, to buy a mystic. I love it. 
All right, we're going to take that because it's funny you say Mystic Axie. It's a little hint of what's to come, but we're going to the lightning round. All right, I'm just going to, yep. I'm going to throw 10 topics at you and I want your absolute snap reaction. Don't think too much yep. into it. It's going to be, it's going to be one of the things that we do here on Origin Stories and it's time to drop you into it. You ready? Go. All right, 10 topics. Number one, crypto art. Um, future, future of digital art for sure. Two, Ethereum. Um, safety and being able to buy a house at some point. I like that. Number three, beige. My, my, my entire life. Number four, the mystic axie. Um, I think it's, it's a secured bag for wealth. Number five, Victor Mascara. Um, an asshole. No, I'm kidding. He's my best friend. Like, honestly, Victor is like <laughs> probably is my closest friend. I, 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 yeah, I love this guy so much, and he's he's been in my life every day. And I, I, I'm really grateful to have a friend like Victor. Number six, your favorite piece of art that is not your own. Oh shit! Oh. Fuck. Just, that's, just uh, the first, no, obviously there's a million of them, but just the first one that pops into your head. Oh my god, I would say, oh my god, that's a that's a very hard question. I I love Victor's work so much. I, it's it's it, I, I I wouldn't be able to put a name on it, but it would probably either be. Fuck, that's crazy. That's a very hard question, and that's you. I wasn't prepared for this. I would say either like one of my girlfriend's work or Victor's work. And to me, it's, it's not necessarily because of the artwork itself. It's because I know the work they put in, in their sense. craft. You have, you have a unique vision into their process that, that few exactly, other people yeah. have. I like that. Yeah. Number seven, a piece of art you, now go outside your circle, right? A piece of art you wish you owned that you do not right now. A G-Monk. Nice, nice. He just dropped, right? Just dropped yeah. on Nifty Gateway. Yeah, I, I, I missed on this one, and it was because I didn't particularly like the uh, mechanic of the drop. Uh, but I've been a big fan of G-Monk, and I'm so stoked to see him uh, on on crypto art. And I, I'm wishing him like a lot of success for sure. Is it true that he created the art behind the Windows logo? Yeah, yeah, he did. Nice. I think the, I think you can see the process on on Vimeo, and it's a, like it's 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 all physical, like it's it's all projectors, and like uh, he's probably gonna kill me because I, I'm probably gonna but but she's uh, uh, oh I oh, uh, I think she did, but it's probably like fog machine, like projectors, and like uh, stainless uh, not stainless but glass or fiberglass or like not quite sure, but yeah, it's all physical. Yeah, I just found that out. That that blew my mind. Um, all right, back to the lightning round. What art of yours is being slept on right now? Shared vision. Shared vision. Yeah. Number nine, what art of someone else's is being slept on right now? Jason Abayer. Yeah. We just had yeah, a fun Jay moment around Jason Abayer, right? Yeah, Jason. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I feel Jason is so talented. He has such a crazy client list. Yeah, his progress have been insane. His dedication have been insane. Is like, I don't know. Like, I I don't understand. Like, he's he's one of my favorite artists. So yeah. Let me give a quick public service announcement to the collectors out there. Yeah. If you're a collector like me, like you know, most of your art you hold, but you do sell stuff stuff from time to time. Well, Fuckrender here happened to find a piece, which is Gaze by Jason Abayer, that I had had an old price on it because it had lagged in the market for a little bit. And I had put a price that was, at the time, pretty decently above the market, not really thinking that I would necessarily sell it. And then all of a sudden, I go to my email one day, and it said, Gaze has been purchased. So I'm at first thinking, and by the way, you want to avoid this emotion. If someone buys something from you and your first emotion is oh, like, no, then you, <laughs> you clearly set your price, you did something wrong, right? And so I realized right away I did something wrong. I click on who bought it and this guy comes up. 
it was me. So, sorry about so we, that. We talked. No, don't be sorry. It was my fault. <laughs> sorry to sorry. I, I am sorry that I did that. But anyway, I have set things right in the world. I have corrected it. You now own a gaze. I went back into the market and got myself a gaze again. So nice. I love it. Shout out Jason Abayer today. Yeah. Um, and then number ten, your dream collaboration that you that uh, someone that you have not collaborated with yet that you did not have planned to collaborate with, just someone out in the ether that you think would be amazing? Hmm. It's, there's so many artists. I would love to collab with Slime. Good one. Just dropped, very yeah. successful drop. I think he, um, yeah. It's hard to say. There's so many good artists. Like it, it's, yeah. It's like he he made me like, he made me love collage and like, this kind of aesthetic. Like I, I yeah. I like it. That's a good answer. And actually, it brings up a, a bonus lightning round question because Slime Sunday is the trivia question to the the first NFT that I ever owned was a Slime Sunday. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Um, but then right back to you. What was the first NFT you ever owned? The first NFT? I, I have to uh, I have to, to, to go check. I'm not I'm not even sure. I lost track. It's a mad dog. Is it? Which one? Yeah. It's IDs are the currency, eleven out, out of fifty. That's a good one. That's the green the green phone booth, right? Yeah, and that's my second one is Aphoria. That's a standout, man. Yeah, Euphoria is a, is a good one. I actually tried to grab one of his pieces the other day, and I think I re I might have reset the entire market on Euphoria. Everyone was oh, sleeping. Yeah, nice. Everyone was sleeping on Nifty Gateway on some old pieces, nice. and I put in a bid. And next thing I know, three people just snapped up all of them and reset them for like ten x where they were selling for. So that's cool. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, Alexis has been the, one of my best friends for years now, and we we used to live not too far from each other. We we would see each other more often than now i live in vancouver but like we we pretty we talk every day like it's victor and alexi are pretty, pretty much the people I, I i speak the most um yeah I, I think you guys all have just this incredibly just like a warm special together vibe uh, about it like yeah. even when you when you guys interact like you're you're all very supportive to one another you're all very supportive towards the community and so uh it definitely comes yeah. through it comes through that you guys are tight yeah, I'll always support Alexi and Victor in either direction they will, unless it, it becomes something that I'm not approving in terms of like how they act, but there is no chance it's going to happen. They're, they're, yeah. They are so nice. I love that. So, hey, I feel like we could do this for a long, long time. I have, yeah. I have a hunch we might do this again. I have a hunch we might do this again at some point. We should, we should. But for now... Um, any teaser that you might want to drop about what is in store approximately one month from today? Well, I guess actually I should reframe that around when this is released. So it's a, a several weeks from today. Yeah, a month. February 11th. Yeah. Fifth, I would say fuck renderverse. That would, that would be the only thing I would say. Fuck renderverse. Yeah. I love it. Hey, we're going to end on that. I think there's there's nothing nice. more that needs to be said than that. I feel like we'll have a lot more a lot more fun soon. Um, I personally cannot wait to see that. You, you know how big a fan I was of your last drop. Um, I think it, it it speaks for itself. I have all those NFTs vaulted on Nifty Gateway right now. Um, man, it, it's it's been my pleasure. You are the number one NFT of origin stories that's uh, crazy and, and thank you so much for having me like i really i really like what you what you do and i think you and parrot will will definitely help the community around all this new era it's it's gonna be a good a good movement for sure thanks man i appreciate you thank you man